Oh yeah, one more thing I would just like to say this uh, before I go. I would like to say, um, how does it feel to be the stepchild? How does it feel to be second best? How does it feel to be the child that no one likes? How does it feel? So go back, Rick Patino. Go back to doing what you do best, coming down your leg. Shane Bahannon, go back to what you do best. Doing drugs, getting suspended. Um, what more can you say? All right. Well, making his debut the other night, Shane Bahannon had the sixth best scoring total for a freshman in his debut ever with 12 points, and there were 14 points, I should say, to go along with 12 rebounds in the game on Friday. Had a chance to catch up with him as well and talk about joining the Cardinals basketball team. Well, what is it like being a, a freshman in the Rick Pitino <coughs> system? We hear all the toughest things that are, that are tough to adjust to. What's the toughest adjustment if there's been one for you? The example of how to not live your life. Be a Louisville fan and act like Louisville's players and coach. That's the, that's the example of how not to live your life. So just look at the Louisville program and pretty much do the opposite of everything they do and you'll have a good life. <laughs> like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, Go Big Blue, the greatest college basketball program of all time. Uh playing defense because in high school I was really uh, playing, you know, defense. I was always the one to try to stay out of foul trouble because I was the best on the team and uh, just playing defense and uh, taking, not taking plays off. So I think that's, I mean. It, it's, yeah, it seems like we hear that a lot that, that when from high school guys that, you know, if you're the best player on the team, you can't, you know, get in foul trouble. Do coaches have to tell you literally, hey, just back off if a guy is coming your way sometimes? School. Yeah, uh, Yeah, school. always, but it's a different system here, so. Uh. And that um, where one family may make do with a very old car or with one, you know, with just one car um, and therefore has a certain amount of, you know, of money available, another family may decide that they need new cars um, and therefore say, well, we don't have the money to send our kids to school. Everybody got to play defense because everyone uh, you, now there's a lot of guys that's more sh taller, stronger, and quicker, so uh, you got to play defense in order to win. What sold you on the University of Louisville? You, had, you could have gone anywhere you wanted. Why did you choose uh, Just Rick Pitino himself, uh, his, his legacy that he had in uh, the basketball, and uh, just the teammates, uh, one, the city, because I am from a bigger city, so I mean, that's really what uh, sold me, and, uh, and they got great fans here, too, so that's one. It's, it's one of the reasons why this school doesn't grow bigger than it does because uh, the, I think the people, a, a large portion of, of people that we could serve um, may be a little bit uncomfortable in public school, but they, when they look at spending any money, that, that does, it doesn't seem worth it to them. And that over the years we've seen um, families who really wanted to, their kids to be at Sudbury Valley figure out how to make the sacrifices that are necessary in order to be able to pay the tuition. Okay. Does this team this year, do you, you know, what, do you think this team can be as good as it, you know, it's ranked top 10? Do you guys feel like you're going to be a top 10 team? Uh, that's something we really don't look at. Uh, trying to, I mean, that's just other people's opinions. I think uh, who's better than who. I mean, it's all going to show at the end who's. Uh, holding the title. So, I mean, we, that's one thing Coach Tino told us not to talk about uh, the ranking. Uh, just go out and play your game. That's it. And um, to me, it's kind of hard to, to honor that sacrifice and commitment on one hand and, um, and to subsidize you know, someone else on the other hand. Um, it's a difficult question, but, um, but our approach to it has been to, um, to do everything we can to keep the tuition low. Like Naismith, Rupp always wanted to compete against the best teams in the nation, wherever he could find them. In a day when most schools never traveled far from home, Rupp was always taking his Wildcats all over the country to find competition. Uh, not great news. Uh, Shane Bahannon is no longer a part of our basketball team, and uh, he's been indefinitely suspended by the university. 
for violation of uh, university and team rules. Um, um, can Shane come back on the basketball team? It is possible. It's not probable as we set up an arrangement for him to come back and, he, and he's already violated the arrangement uh, in less than one week. His eagerness to play any team anywhere forced others to either learn the newer fast-paced style of play or be left behind as basketball moved into its modern era. By 1958, Rupp's teams had earned two Helms Foundation National Championships, one NIT championship, and four NCAA crowns, and had changed the face of the sport forever by establishing the nation's first college basketball dynasty. At that time, no other school's record even came close. It, it seems like if there's a league that being a big guy and being a tough guy to, the, to play in, this would be the Big East would be the league. Do you get? I know you got games now, but is that something that excites you about playing here? Oh uh, yeah, big one guy? thing you don't excite me about this year is playing in Madison Square Garden. Uh, I mean, that's one of the old tradition uh, arenas uh, throughout. Adolph Rupp never coached a losing team at UK in his 42-year reign. Taking more than 80% of his players from the hills of Kentucky, the Baron of the Bluegrass won 876 games against only 190 losses. To this day, no coach with over 500 career wins has a higher winning percentage than Adolph Rupp. His teams won seven national championships, 27 SEC titles, and appeared in 20 NCAA tournaments. Four times he was named National Coach of the Year and seven times SEC Coach of the Year. Rupp was enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1969. The NBA and a lot of great players came through there, so just to be probably named one of the greatest players, like one of my greatest players, Kobe Bryant, so just mm -hmm. probably name one uh, with them was just an honor and a uh, yeah, real big honor, uh, a true blessing. So have you, you've you never played there before? <clears throat> no, I've never played there. It's been yeah. my first time. Yeah. What other big men do you model yourself after? Is there a guy that, you know, you, you look at? Uh, no, nah, I, I really don't, but uh, I heard a lot of people, Coach Patino, compare me to uh, Rodney, Rodney McCray and uh, mm -hmm. Jamal Mashman, But Have you met or talked to those guys? No, or? I haven't. No, yeah. I haven't. Did you know who Rodney McCray even was? I mean, he's a little no, before I, you were born, right? Yeah, that's before I was born. I mean, I heard he's a great player, but... yeah. So just hearing about him is an honor to be a comparative tool. What, what about um, f for you? How do you think you're going to be able to, you're in a starting lineup now, they're your guy they count on. What's going to keep you to be a guy they count on? What kind of things? <laughs> Take one day at a time. Uh, go, just work hard and practice. Uh, listen to what the upperclassmen have to say. Cause they've been here and done it. Uh, they've been through the NCAA dump, the tournament, and uh, I'm just a newcomer. So whatever they ask me to do, it'll help the team. That's what I'm going to do. Well, best of luck to you this year. Appreciate it. He was coach of the 1948 U.S. Olympic gold medal team and was selected coach of the century. 24 of his players were All-Americans and 28 went on to play professionally. The Baron of the Bluegrass retired in 1972 as the winningest coach in basketball history and passed away in 1977. The feared home court of the Kentucky Wildcats bears his name to this day. So it's, um, it'll be indefinite, it'll be a long time. Uh, I'm very concerned, I was never concerned about Shane, the basketball player. He's extremely respectful, he's a good guy, he's a good teammate, and he's an excellent basketball player. But he just has a very difficult time uh, understanding uh, life's values. And, and, and to try and, and uh, have everybody pay the same amount. It's not so much that people can't afford it, but they would make, wouldn't make the choice unless they were suffering. 
one of the factors that we took into account when we talked about tuition is uh, how much money could uh, a 16-year-old reasonably make in a year at a part-time job. Significance of life <coughs> values, and uh, we're going to try to help them along. Uh, we're more interested in Shane the man than we are right now the basketball player, and uh, we want to see him prosper as a as a person.